And here we are back again with a little bit of Algebra, Chapter 3, Section 5, Graphing Linear Equations in Slope-Intercept Form, y equals mx plus b. Nice, nice function. Slope-Intercept Form is y equals mx plus b. In a previous lesson on Mathemind, you learned that b is the y-intercept. Y-intercept is the b. Yo, check this, where the graph crosses the y-axis. To determine y, just make x zero, because if you make x zero, this falls away, and then you're left with y equals b, whatever the y-intercept is. That's one step to being a function hero. Well, now you're going to learn that slope equals rise over run. m is a slope. It's dope. That's fun. Rise is the change in y. Subtract points 2 and 1. That's right. Run through the horizontal plane. It's a change in x. Do you hear what I'm saying? So there you have it. y equals mx plus b. m is the slope. b is the y-intercept. And we will look a little bit more at slope, rise over run. So slope is also the steepness of a line, how steep it is. Okay, the bigger the slope, the steeper the line. That's rise over run. You can write it as the change in y over the change in x. So delta y over delta x, change in y, change in x. All right, so if we want to find the slope of a line, we always read from left to right. Very important, read from left to right. So we're going to start at the leftmost point, and then we're going to move to the point on the right. So from left to right. Now, rise over run. So we're going to check what's the rise to get from point J to point K. So the rise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is 5. The run going this way over is always to the right. One, two, three, four. So the slope is five over four. Rise over run. The slope of this line, remember, we start with the leftmost point. We'll do the rise again first. Rise, in this case, notice it's negative. There can be a negative rise. If we go down, that means that's negative. So negative six. Over is always positive because it's always to the right. Over 3. So there's the slope now. It's negative 6 over 3 can be simplified. So that's just negative 2. Leave it as a fraction unless it can be simplified. All right, what's the slope of this line? All right, well, we're going to check our rise again. Rise, do we go up or down? No, rise is 0. Uh, and then the run, doesn't matter what the run is because 0 divided by anything is still 0. Okay, so notice horizontal line has a slope of 0 because there's no rise. What about a vertical line? All right, a vertical line, the rise, okay, from point, well, where do we start? We read left to right and top to bottom, so we'll start at Q. We go down, okay, so 5 or negative 5. Either way, it doesn't really matter because it's over 0. Can you divide by 0? Can you divide by 0? No, you cannot divide by 0, so this is undefined. Do not divide by 0. It's illegal in 53 countries. Dangerous things happen if you divide by 0. Don't do it. So, vertical line slope is undefined. All right, so here's a quick summary. A positive slope, reading from left to right, this goes up. Going from left to right, a negative slope goes down. A zero slope, if you try to put some skis on there and ski this slope, you're not going to move anywhere. That's zero. If you put some skis on this one, you're going to fall to your death. Uh, or maybe it's not that far of a fall, but you cannot ski this. You will just fall, drop. Okay, That's not a slope, that's a drop-off. So it is an undefined slope. Um, sometimes we can interchange rate of change and slope. All right, those things refer to the same thing. All right, let's look at finding the slope from a table. Okay, these points, it's, it tells me that they lie on a line. Okay, to find the slope here, remember, the slope is change in y over change in x. All right, so... What's the change in y? From 20 to 14, I have to subtract 6. Now, make sure you could check to see that it's constant. They've told us that it lies on a line, but we could see, okay, to get to 8, that's also minus 6, and then 
to get to 2, also minus 6. So yeah, this is constant. Here we have plus 3. From 7 to 10 is plus 3. From 10 to 13 is plus 3. So they weren't lying to us. This is a constant rate of change, so it is a linear function. But the change in y is negative 6 over the change in x is 3. So this again is negative 2. So the slope here is negative 2. All right, since they told us it's a line, I'm not going to have to check the rest of these. Now this here, the change is 0. Change here is 2. So change in y goes on top. 0 over 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. Okay, over here, change in y is positive 3. So put 3 on top. Change in x is 0. Cannot do that. Do not do that. Undefined. Never divide by 0. All right. If we have a couple of coordinates, find the slope of the line that goes through the given points. Remember, this is your x, and this is the y. This is the x, and this is the y. So we want to find the change in y. I'm going to do that on top. Change in y. From 2 to get to 7, I have to add 5. From 3 to get to 5, I have to add 2. So my slope here is 5 over 2 m equals 5 over 2. In this example here, to get from 5 to negative 2, I'm very careful, make sure we're using the y values on top. Change in y on top. Get to 5 to negative 2, I have to subtract 7. So negative 7 on top. And then on the bottom, the x, change in x from negative 1 to 2, I have to add 3. So negative 7 over 3. All right, finding the slope from some coordinates. Identifying slopes and lines and y, uh, slopes and y-intercepts. Very easy when it is in slope-intercept form because m is the slope and y equals mx plus b plus b. So m is 3, so the slope, slope m is 3. Y-intercept b is negative 4. Very important that it's negative 4 because we're adding a negative 4 here. Plus a negative is the same as subtracting. So negative 4. All right. b, this one isn't written as y equals mx plus b. There's no x here. So we need to write that. y equals no x plus 6.5. Okay, no x means 0x, so m is equal to 0, b is equal to 6.5. All right, finally, this one here is not in slope-intercept form either, so we have to solve for y. Add 5x to each side. That gives me negative y is equal to 5x minus 2. And then y is still not quite solved. Remember, any time a variable doesn't have a coefficient, put a 1 there. Divide by negative 1. It means I have to divide every term by negative 1. Divide by negative 1. And then I get y is equal to negative 5x plus 2. So m is equal to negative 5, and b is equal to 2. All right, when graphing a function in slope-intercept form, graphing, we want to start with the y-intercept, and from that point, very important, follow the slope. Okay, you can think of it this way. Begin. B for begin, begin here, and move this, okay? So begin at positive 3, and move negative 2 over 3, down 2, down 2, over 3, 1, 2, 3, and there's my second point, 
and graph that line that goes through those points. All right, let's do this one down here. Start at negative 2, begin here. Move this. Always make your slope a fraction. Then you know that you have to go over 1. Up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1. And then we graph a line that goes through those points. There you go. Graphing. All right, modeling with mathematics. A submersible that is exploring the ocean floor begins to ascend to the surface. The elevation h in feet of the submersible is modeled by the function h of t is equal to 650 minus 13,000, where t is the time in minutes since the submersible began to ascend. Ascend means to move up. Graph the function and identify its domain and range. Interpret the slope and the intercepts of the graph. Okay, in order to graph this, I'm going to first find the intercept. So h of t is equal to 650t minus 1300, uh, 13,000, sorry. Um, this is in slope intercept form because remember this is a nickname for y, right? y equals m variable x plus b. So the y intercept is negative 13,000. To find the x-intercept, I need to make y 0. So 0 is equal to 650t minus 13,000. Add 13,000 to each side, we get 13,000 is equal to 650t. And divide by 650. And t is equal to 20 which means the x-intercept x intercept is 20. All right, so on a graph, when I'm graphing this, my y-intercept is at negative 13,000. My x-intercept is at 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. These intercepts, what do they mean? Interpret the slope and the intercepts. Okay, the intercept here means when it started out. When time was zero, when it started out, it was 13,000 below uh, the surface. 20 minutes later, this is the x-intercept, at 20 minutes, the submersible was at the surface. Okay, to graph that, I'm going to connect those two intercepts. The reason I use the intercepts this time instead of the slope is because we have 13,000, and then a slope of 650 would be really hard to graph. Okay, so it's a little bit easier sometimes using the intercepts. The domain and range of this. Okay, domain and range. Since this function has a start and end that we can see here, clearly defined, we have a smallest value and a greatest value. The x values is the domain, so that's t. This is the domain. The smallest value there is 0. The largest value is 20. So the values of the graph are in between, less than or equal to, because this was filled in, less than or equal to. The range, the smallest y value is negative 13,000. The largest y value is 0. And I can change the variable here because we're using t. And this is h. So put h there, less than or equal, less than or equal. There's my domain and range. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, graphing in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. m is the slope, move, y-intercept is the b, yo, check this, begin here. All right, that's all the fun we're going to have today. Check in again next time for another fun lesson.